So to me, the markets are a discounting effect. They're a, they're a forward-looking mechanism. We don't know, know why when PayPal is at $310, why it's going to be $100, uh, you know, two months later. Let me share my screen and just share some of my thoughts as disjointed as they probably are. Um, you know, we had a just a hellacious week last week, um, really tested a lot of assumptions. Um, you know, I still believe this market is going down big. And uh, but it's not as easy. Uh, you know, sh being short is, you know, really a you know, tough business. I, you know, I've been saying for a long time, the short covering rallies are almost more jarring than the, uh, the sell-offs themselves. You know, we're looking at the triple Qs, which is a proxy for the NASDAQ. And, uh, you know, last week we had a 10% retracement. We had 6% in one day, where Thursday market opened down 3%, finished up 3.5%, yet a 6.5% swing. You know, we've seen that on Tesla, but on the index is quite amazing. So, you can see that, uh, you know, it's it's not an easy game we play here. You know, here's a 10% swing from, from uh, you know, uh, trough to peak in this case. Um, but this is where, to my mind, I always look for what is the prevailing trend, you know, or pattern that is governing or dictating, you know, a direction. And, uh, you know, in this case, yes, it's three steps forward and two back, but I still believe the direction, you know, is lower and likely to keep going lower. And it's, you know, this is independent of Russia and what have you. When, you know, this head and shoulders was forming, you know, maybe some analyst somewhere was seeing a buildup somewhere, but, you know, Russia wasn't really on the radar here. So to me, the markets are a discounting effect. They're, they're a forward looking mechanism. We don't know, know why when PayPal is at $310, why it's going to be $100, uh, you know, two months later. There's nothing on the balance sheets. There's nothing at that time that would, if we read something, we would know that, you know, uh, Facebook's going to go from 320 to 100 to 200. And so, you know, there's something up here that the, you know, the market was starting to tell us, you know, that this was topping. And so to my mind, this is a whole big, bad bear price pattern. And it doesn't just get resolved here and then go back and go back to, to a new high. So, you know, uh, but it gets confusing because sometimes, you know, the market throws us a pattern and then throws us another pattern. And so we could very easily say, well, here's an even atom double bottom. You've got all of these. And then, you know, I usually look for confirmations in the form of price reversals. So if something makes a new low and close on the high and does so on these huge range bars, you know, typically that's pretty, you know, conclusive that it's going to go, you know, the other way. And so this has kind of been my struggle. I've been like looking at these charts all weekend, breaking it apart, you know, playing devil's advocate, you know, saying, you know, can I see something like this? And to my mind, you know, this is still the prevailing pattern. And so this is where, you know, it, it's, Market throws us all kinds of looks. And, you know, I don't say stick to your guns because being obstinate could be, uh, you know, a painful experience in the markets. You know, we see something and then, you know, by and large, the market should either start confirming what we're seeing, you know, or it, you know, starts busting it. And if it does, then you can't just be obstinate, digging your heels and say, well, you know, it's still going to go down. So, um, what I spoke about in my video this weekend was the concept of, you know, risk and reward. And so right now we're really in a very difficult area to set up a trade where typically I look for areas, pockets where I, I can understand the pattern. I can understand the direction. Then I can sneak in at an area where I can create a risk reward dynamic. And the problem is, is that, you know, you're, you're trading, you know, between, you know, let's say three, almost 60 on the upside and 320 on the downside. And now you're kind of smack in the middle. So now if you go long, you know, where's your risk down here? It's a big risk. If you go short, you know, you know, where's your risk? So 
The thing is, when you get into dynamics like this, where I still think this is going to go lower, um, and the problem is the market is not offering us kind of neat ways. Usually I get a nice key reversal. I get a setup of a few bars. It kind of gives us a, you know, some time to go in. But you can see that this market, it kind of just goes to a high, then gaps, and then goes. And so sometimes it doesn't let us catch it. And then today, same thing. Close at the high, gaps, and then, you know, I don't know where it's going to go here. And I don't really like a market that closes on the high. Uh, to now say, okay, it opens lower, and now I start chasing this thing. Because very often, you know, the market needs to resolve itself, kind of shake hands with that previous unchanged, maybe even go higher. And then if it closed lower, now we can start seeing the beginnings of some kind of risk reward. But even when something goes straight up, usually it doesn't go straight down. So it becomes, you know, more difficult. And this is where you know, the discipline really comes in where, you know, you see something, you know, there's Russia, the markets are going down and, you know, you want to chase it and it becomes a little bit more difficult. And so this is where the discipline is to wait until, you know, the trades come to you, wait until it's a little clearer and you may have to miss, you know, the first part of the move. You may just gap today and then go down big and you go, wow, I knew this was coming off. Why didn't I get short? You know, well, tomorrow, you know, it probably will give you another chance and, you know, it'll build. So, you know, even this kind of thing, it's kind of now got to build away, build some room to fall. You know, I don't know that it's just going to just fall right out of bed. Although these markets are so freaking apoplectic, you know, anything can happen. You can see this is what's happening. They close on the low, they gap, and then they have a monster moves lower. They don't really even get give you a chance to get in. So, you know, I... Uh, I've been treating this where I just treat pockets of strength. I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, just selling into that. Meaning that, you know, every time it goes higher, I'm just buying more IG, uh, IGB puts. Um, I just think that, uh, you know, that this thing is coming lower. I looked at this so many ways over the weekend and I just feel that, um, and again, I don't want to get dogmatic and ideological and, you know, you know, I've done this before and, you know, and then the market kind of takes you to the woodshed. So, you know, this is what, what it looked like, you know, last week where we go to 300 and then we finish at 340. You know, it's a 10 plus percent move in a week and uh, very jarring. And this is the nature of being short, you know, short you know, it builds up a vacuum. It's like pushing that beach ball further and further underwater at some point you know, if you can't push it any further and you take your hand off, it explodes the other way. And this is the nature of, you know, being short because it's a dynamic where, you know, people see that there's an area where, you know, you need to buy it and then shorts need to get out. And in order to cover their positions, what do they need to do? They need to buy. So it's a double whammy where people are not selling and then the shorts are buying and then everybody else is buying and you create this what's called short covering rally where even, you know, two weeks ago, you know, they wouldn't let you out. There wasn't a, a down tick in the market from here to here. It wasn't one, one down tick. They just didn't let you out from here to there. I was watching the queues all day. They didn't go down for, you know, a minute. And you just know they got, they got you by the cojones. And it's just, that's the nature of short covering. And so it's a, it's a tough game, you know. So even though I see this thing going lower, they don't make it easy. You can see, yeah, 45, it's 1.3 million. 1.3 million dollars short. So, pop out a profit for 118,000 there. Don't so you can see million. how this is going crazy now. You can see how the market just going nuts. I bet like a, a million six on this position. I'm showing right now $23,000 gain.